Welcome everybody to today's Blue Rain uh, podcast. Uh, here in the studio, my office, we have um, Helen Tindo. And welcome, Helen. Thank you. I'm yeah. excited to be here. I thought it would be cool to visit with you and, and um, go over some things. I uh, wanted to say that uh, Helen is a, a budding artist, and uh, she comes from a long line of other artists, all the way from her great-grandmother, her grandmother, her mother, a lot of influence in her life right there. Um, where, did, where were you born and where were you raised? I was born in Albuquerque. I grew up in Albuquerque. I lived there until 2009, until I was about 22. I did spend a lot of time coming up here to Santa Fe because my family participated in different booth shows and museum shows and gallery shows. And I also spent a lot of time at Santa Clara Pueblo when I was a kid. Helen is a descendant from uh, Santa Clara Pueblo. Um, and a lot of the uh, art that her family has generated revolves around traditional dances and and uh, ceremonies at the Pueblo. Um, who's the biggest influence in your career so far, of your family? Of my family? Yeah. I would say that's a tie between my parents. I learned a lot from both of them. Um, my dad, Greg, is a fine art picture framer and he does custom finishes and I spent a lot of time in his shop. So I was watching the frame process, which is very involved, from milling the wood to custom finishes with gilding and lacquers and toning. And then also my mom. I think my mom had a big influence on my creative process and really teaching me to be loose and excited about where I was going with my art. Ah, oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, I've, I've known your dad and your mom for many years. Um, I think when we were in Taos, we actually represented your mom for about four or five years, mm -hmm. um, and before she took off to I don't know Ventana Gallery, yes. and, and then uh, ended up with her own gallery and a very successful career. I, I remember watching uh, your mom's early work, and it seemed more like doodly. Mm -hmm. And as as she got older and more developed, it got more refined, and things started popping up. Um, you know, definitely a character. Um, what about your your grandma? Pablita. She was a big influence on me as a person. Her, she painted in her studio kind of by herself. She had her TV on and she was painting and it was very serious. And art wasn't something where they give kids a piece of paper and a paintbrush and they say, do what you want to do. They say, those are my paintbrushes. Don't mess them up. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of I like to watch her paint. I used to remember watching her make her paints. She would grind down earth and mix them with Elmer's glue to make her earth pigments. And I would watch her process as far as tracing and drawing and then starting the painting process so I could observe, but I never really participated. Uh, my grandma Pablita was a big influence as far as business-minded sense. Um, as a kid, she would participate, when I was a kid, I would go with her to Indian Market and Eight Northern, and my grandma was the one who taught me how to sell art, and that I needed to not be afraid to talk to people, and that there was this huge business sense behind every artist, and being an artist is a lot more than just creating art. So, in, in Pablita's case, um, in, in one of our podcasts with uh, Billy Shank, uh, he brought up the fact that his work is is studied by a lot of native artists mm -hmm. and we were talking about the fact that uh it's flat art and i was like what do you mean and he's all well it's kind of tree stuff and i go that reminds me of uh helen when she went to her grandma pablita's house and cleaned out the the garage mm -hmm. and found all those those drawings that she used to replicate from yes and so that's that's definitely a, a process so what was the difference in her process from your grandma helen harden i think their process started out pretty similarly as far as having an idea and then putting it down preliminarily onto tracing paper or another piece of paper to refine the image and then transferring that image onto the surface that would become the painting mm -hmm. and then building layers from there. So they were very organized and methodical and I think that's where you see the similarities. Helen's early pieces were very much 
derivative of Publitas because that's who taught her how to paint. So there was the imagery was very similar, the styles, the spacing, even the mediums. Uh, Helen started in casein, which was Publitas' primary medium. Yeah, I, what I really noticed about your grandma Helen, different from your grandma Pablita, Pablita went through the traditional uh, Indian school of art here in mm -hmm. Santa Fe where she was taught a particular style. Uh, where your grandma Helen, um, she definitely was one of the few uh, during the shoulder period where people are like, we're native, but we don't need people to tell us how to paint like natives. And it, it seemed like a transition started from painting like your grandma to this more abstraction. I think a lot of that was coming into her own and gaining confidence. And I think as an artist, we're all pulled in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, you don't have control about what you create. I say it's very similar to your voice. It mm -hmm. just comes out. Yeah. And Helen really learned to embrace that. And she wasn't a dogmatic person. She didn't feel this pressure from society to be who they expected her to be. She was very okay with groundbreaking. And she also lived in this world of duality. She was half Anglo and half native. She was modern, but very rooted in ancient traditions. Uh, she was very spiritual, but very modern. And she was okay with all of that because that's who, what made her who she was. Mm -hmm. I, I, I consider that uh, era like uh, a bunch of rock stars because you had like Tony Day and uh, you had a freight shoulder, you had Gorman, you had this whole uh, new contingency of native art that just exploded. And it, it's, uh, I think your grandma Helen was at the forefront of that explosion. She was definitely cool. a rock star. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what, what kind of stories do you have as far as um, growing up with your mom and, and her influence on you? Oh, my mom's influence was incredible. And it's something that I really only learned to appreciate later on in life. My mom was also a rock star. She was just bigger than life. Mm -hmm. I remember one time she came to my school and she gave an art lesson. And she was doing this pastel Prismacolor in front of the whole school. And she didn't like it. And she took her painting and she ripped it up mm -hmm. in front of all of these little kids. And everyone was shocked. <laughs> And then she gave everyone a piece of her drawing. Oh, nice. Um, another one, my mom was very involved in fundraising. My grandma Helen died in 1984 of breast cancer. And the New Mexico Women's Foundation started shortly after, and they used a lot of Helen Hardin imagery to raise money. So one time my mom was at an auction, and someone had picked me up from school that day, and I had lost a tooth. And I had been wiggling this tooth in my mouth for weeks wanting it to come out. And it finally came out. And I was so excited to show my mom and I was really excited to show the Tooth Fairy. So I show up at this auction and my mom's just dressed up and ready to host this auction. And I show her my tooth and she snatches it out of my hand and she says, we're gonna auction this off. It's gonna raise <laughs> so much money. So my mom's standing up there and I was just kind of petrified. Uh, and my tooth ended up selling for several hundred dollars. Oh wow. Um, and I just remember being very worried that the tooth fairy was going to come to my house and I wasn't going to have a tooth to give her. So I was very terrified of that. Um, but growing up, I had this very interesting life where I didn't really understand that my life was different from other kids. I thought all these kids went to museums and drank club soda and hung out at galleries on Canyon <laughs> Road. <laughs> um, so it was a very... It was exciting. I was really exposed to a lot of opportunities and my mom was a go-getter. I saw her wake up at five in the morning and start painting and then make me an egg sandwich and send me to school and she would stop painting after school and then we would go to my dad's frame shop and she would work on framing and she was always sending out press kits to galleries and going to openings. So she really immersed me in this huge art world, which has been very beneficial. Yeah, I, I was thinking uh, about some of the pieces in my uh, own collection of your mom's. And uh, when when I worked with her, uh, your your dad's frame shop, she had a loft on top. And mm -hmm. so they were kind of in the same building. Uh, but some of the pieces I have were more uh, wood constructs, 
with paint over them. Like, yeah. I, I think your dad had some influence in some of those uh, pieces as well, but they're really interesting uh, works. And it, it's been nice to see uh, her journey. I've, I've really appreciated watching her. How about your work? My work. <laughs> Tell us about your work. What, what do you like? Uh, I mean, in, the, in our office today, we have some of your pieces in here uh, hanging. Um, how did you come to develop your style? So I actually didn't want to be an artist growing up. I have an economics degree, and in 2009, I was hanging out with my mom at her gallery. She was getting ready for Indian Market, and I was talking and talking, really bothering her, and she just shoved a panel in my face, and she's like, Helen, just do something. And I did my first painting, and it was, uh, it was pretty much me doodling and filling it in with oil paints that were my mom's. So I had this very illustrative style that was kind of indicative of Poblita style because that's probably who I watched the most and it was it translated very well for me so I had this very illustrative funny style my mom died in 2015 and I thought I would never paint again I threw my entire studio away and several years later I got this itch I wanted to paint but I was very afraid to do so so I went and I bought a few little paints and a tiny little board and I did my first painting and my style completely evolved. It grew up with me and that was very exciting. So I'm kind of in this mix between this wild, expressive, abstract catharsis and also this more illustrative um, style that gets a lot of inspiration from outside. When I was a little girl, I have a little brother, and I would always ask my mom, who do you love more, knowing it should be me? And she would always tell me, I love you like the sunshine shines on flowers, like there's plenty of sunlight on both of you, which I found to be a kind of cop-out answer. But <laughs> <laughs> um, sunshine and outside really reminds me of my mom, and there's this closeness. So for my first show at Blue Rain, I started this style where I was drawing flowers. And it's a nice uh, it's a nice style for me. I feel like there's a lot of different avenues for creativity. Um, I'm going between acrylic paint and watercolor right now. I like both mediums. And similarly to my mom and Grandma Helen, I'm not trying to limit myself at this point in my career. I feel like I should try as many things as I want and really focus in. And my objective is to create the best piece of art that I can, however that goes. Well, it seems like you have a lot of experimentation going on as far as textures, colors, sanding. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about a little bit of that, what, what you're putting into the paintings. What, what are you experimenting with? I love visual texture. That's something that I've always been drawn to, and I'm drawn to movement. Uh, one of the things that I like to watch when my mom would paint is I liked watching the paint come off of the paintbrush. And that's still something I'm very excited about because that's the moment I give up control of the painting and I let it take on its own life. And then working with my dad in his frame shop, I learned art's a lot more durable in a lot of instances than people would expect. And it has this really intense physicality to it. And I like to have a dialogue with my pieces. And sometimes that's me scratching into the painting and doing a scraffito style. I also like to build up lots of layers of paint and play with different color combination and juxtapositions and then cover it up. And then I like to take a orbital sander and I sand the panel and it's really exciting to see what reveals itself in the image so it gives it a lot of visual texture and depth and it's very interesting and I think a thing about a painting that makes it good is it should be a good painting when you're looking at this much of it up close and it should be a good painting when you're looking at it from across the room so that's one of my ob objectives as well. Well, I think it's, uh, you're developing wonderfully, and uh, it takes time and a lot of practice. I, I, I've noticed that when I've done art myself, uh, if you don't do it every day and practice, practice, you don't, you don't develop and grow. And mm -hmm. it looks like you've really paid a price for that. And, and uh, just observing 
being in situations to see uh, skills like your dad had or skills that your mom had and trying to incorporate that stuff together. It's pretty cool. It's pretty been cool. exciting. Um, do you have any funny stories about your grandma, Pablita? <laughs> I have lots of funny stories about my grandma, Pablita. There was, I think it was an article about either Fritz Shoulder or R.C. Gorman. And I remember it came out in the Albuquerque Journal. We would go to, over to her house on Sundays. And my dad brings her this article. And my grandma's reading this article. And she looks up and she says, Well, I guess I'm the only great Indian without an ego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my grandma was hilarious. She was a character. She was really funny. And she knew it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I miss her a lot. She was exciting to be around because she didn't hold anything back. I knew Grandma Pablita at the later end of her life uh, because I'm the great-grandchild. So at this point, she had built her way up to success and she had endured the hardships. So she was really ready to say whatever she wanted to say because she had earned that right. Uh, she would be painting and people would be going door to door because they used to do that more in Albuquerque. And my grandma would open the door and they would be like, oh, is Pablita here? They, we want to sell her something. My grandma would be like, oh, no, I'm just the maid. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she also had, a lot of people don't know that my grandma had dentures. Um, so a lot of times, pretty much at every show, she wouldn't put enough fixative in. So there would be <laughs> one point in the show where she would be talking to people and then all of a sudden she would close her lips <laughs> and I would have to come up with an excuse to walk her out so she could go to the bathroom and put more fixative in her teeth. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> she was really funny. Yeah, I think uh, one of the first paintings I ever bought as a collector was one of hers. Oh, cool. Uh, at 8 Northern Pueblo Show. Um, Right around 1992. Oh, or so. cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those casing uh, uh, deer dancer paintings. Yeah. And yeah. She was fantastic. Um, how does it feel to uh, be part of such great legacy? It's exciting. It's intimidating. It's a big responsibility that I feel so privileged to have. Uh, we are the only female painting dynasty to be recorded. And when I was a little kid, this was really intimidating. And that's why I didn't want to be a part of it. And now, knowing how hard everyone worked to build this legacy, I have this great honor of carrying it on. And that really means a lot to me. I have a picture of my grandma Pablita and grandma Helen sitting on the side of the road where there's this huge tree and they literally took their paintings and put nails in the tree and hung them on this tree <laughs> <laughs> so that people driving down the road would sell their paintings. Nice. And they really worked their butts off. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandma painted until three days before she died of pneumonia. Wow. Um, so, and she was groundbreaking. And my grandma really had to deal with a lot of racism and sexism and economic discrimination. Her first toy was a dead chipmunk that someone had stuffed and let her pretend it was a doll. <laughs> uh, her shoes, they would take their shoes and cut the toes off of them and make sandals for them in the summer. She grew up in extreme poverty and she worked her butt off and no one helped her. She did it on her own. And she taught me that I could do that. She taught me the power of hard work. Um, and I owe her a lot. I owe my grandma so much. And knowing that that continued to my mom. And I've never seen... I didn't want to be an artist because I thought that was the hardest job anyone could have. Because you have to spend all of this emotional and physical time and energy to create this body of work. And then when you're completely broke and exhausted and tired you have to gather the second wind to dress up and go to an opening and talk to people and put yourself out there and then the next day you have to start all over again and my grandma would she would paint her paintings and then she also sold christmas cards and posters and she would sit there and sign them all and we would bag them and she would sell them for five dollars and she had her books and 
every single sale meant the same to my grandma. And she worked just as hard to sell a painting as she did to sell these cards. And she just built, built this empire uh, with her blood and sweat and tears. Yeah. So I'm excited. It really means a lot. <laughs> do, you, um, do you ever feel the pressure of sustaining the legacy? I do. I try not to focus on that because <laughs> <laughs> it's really terrifying. Um, one thing that I've learned is that all I can do is try my hardest and be okay with being me. My mom was a rock star. Grandma Helen was a rock star. My grandma was this tiny little Indian lady, and she was a rock star. And they scare the crap out of me. They're terrifying. Um, and I felt really intimidated by my mom when I was a kid because she was just voluptuous, and she had this laugh that could take over a room, mm -hmm. and she was gorgeous, and she made these insanely intelligent, sophisticated, abstract paintings and I would look at my mom through my nerdy little glasses and just think that I could never be her. And that really was a big barrier in me wanting to be an artist because I didn't feel like I could be my mom. And I don't think it took until, it took until after my mom passed away for me to realize that I don't have to be my mom. I can just be me and I can do this mm -hmm. because I have the skill set, I have the knowledge, I have the memories. I'm still made from these people, even though I'm not them. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a big challenge for my mom too. I mean, being the descendant of Helen Hardin is a big deal. Yeah. This is a woman who achieved international rock star status, being a total babe of the art world by the time she was 43 and passed away. Um, she was 10 years older than me and she achieved this status. So I think my mom even felt this. And I think a lot of it is just gaining confidence as an adult and also getting to a point where it's like, I guess I have to do this. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to try. I, I, what I see uh, commonality is um, it takes years to get to that voice that you want to present. Mm -hmm. And you're at the start of this journey. It'll be very interesting to see what comes up because all four of you uh, have, as you're progressing or has, as they progressed, uh, developed different styles. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. It's very cool. And mm -hmm. it's nice that everyone does have their own style because there's this level of independence. And the legacy would not have continued if it was all just this derivative dynasty. Yeah. And it really took each woman standing on her own and having a successful career and great art and a strong voice on her own to continue this legacy. And I think one thing where I really appreciate you and this gallery is me understanding that I am at the beginning of this journey and I don't know it all. And for the previous generations, they had each other. Uh, my mom grew up with Helen Hardin and Pablita and then when Helen passed away, my mom still had Pablita. And for a while, I had my mom. But my mom died when I was 26. So it's also trying to carry this legacy into the dark. So I'm realizing and I'm coming into this journey with a lot of humility. I don't want people to think that I have this sense of entitlement where I'm the fourth generation of this great dynasty and all of this is going to fall into my lap. Yeah. Um, I really, I appreciate all of the wisdom that you guys have for me and the guidance and really making sure that uh, we carry on this legacy together in the best way possible. Um, Cause I'm not, it didn't all fall into my lap. I mean, I'm gonna go to work right after this yeah. podcast. Probably uh, framing. Yep, framing, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, that's okay. You, you take it a little at a time and you'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, we enjoy working with you as well, Helen, and uh, we appreciate the legacy that you represent in your family. And I've, I've been blessed to have been around them. I never met uh, Helen, but mm -hmm. I, I definitely spent some good time with Pablita and your mom. Uh, both of them are characters. I think uh, Pablita and, and your mom have a similar personality where they're a little bit hot and fiery sometimes. Oh, definitely yeah. hot and fiery. <laughs> but uh, what, what we like is uh, finding young talent, and you definitely have talent. And um, for those of you who are thinking about collecting, this is a great opportunity to invest in somebody that's 
going to be a shooting star. Thank you. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we thank you for uh, stopping by today, and we've enjoyed our visit. I um, want to encourage everybody to sign up for our podcast. We're in Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you get a chance, please subscribe. and um, Remember to like and share. Get like and share <laughs> uh, so we can grow. And uh, appreciate uh, your time, Helen. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. This is Blue Rain Podcast. Thanks. Thank you.